Okay, so we're gonna try a different camera angle this time. Hopefully I stay in frame. <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna look at is the calculation associated with finding the internal resistance of a battery, okay? So what we wanna do is take a look at our data and notice a couple of things, okay? One, that it suggests, right, the hint is that we use the loop rule to find our internal resistances. And the basic idea here is that you've got a battery which has a small internal resistance in series with it, and then all of this is inside the battery casing. Right, the internal resistance, as we've discussed in class, comes from the materials of the battery, the battery chemistry, the rate at which the chemical reactions can happen, all of these kind of things. And we model it just as a little resistor. And all we have in this experiment is a single external resistance. And we do it for two different resistance values, right? We do it for 10 ohms and 100 ohms. And depending on, on the, the actual value of those things, right? If they were within the tolerance, then you might get slightly different values here. But we're gonna assume that they are actually exactly 10 and exactly 100 for these calculations, all right? So the basic idea goes like this. You remember measuring the so-called open circuit voltage of the battery? Well, that we're gonna call V uh, sub B for battery. And for my selected battery, what I got was 1.599, which is quite steady at that value. So I kept the, the extra digit of precision past what we have been. And that is sort of the ideal voltage of our battery. Let's move the markers here. That's much more vivid. Hopefully it can be seen better. Okay, now. That means that this right here, the battery specifically, is supplying V sub B to the circuit. And it's going to drop in two pieces. One over the internal resistance of the battery, R. And it's going to drop over the external resistance of the circuit, which in this case is just one resistor, big R, that I'm going to call it. The loop rule tells us that The supplied voltage, which in this case is V sub B, has to equal the voltage drops as you go around the circuit. So that's V sub little r plus V sub big R. Okay? Now, <clears throat> there's a couple of things we don't know here, okay? But that we can figure out. Let's go through it though. Our eventual goal is to find little r. And so what the first thing we want to do is rewrite this term right here as the product of the current running through the internal resistance and the internal resistance itself. That gets the thing that we want to find into our equation. So let's do that. next thing we want to do is realize that we have measured two of these things, okay? Uh, we've measured this and we've measured this, right? The voltage drop across the external resistor. E as easy as just taking a voltmeter and putting it in parallel here, okay? And that's what we did, or I did. <coughs> so where do we go from here? Well, we know these two things with the red check marks. We can determine the current. What's the current going to be? Well, eh, we don't know R, so we can't do the whole like total resistance thing and then take use Ohm's law and figure out what the current is. However, we can apply Ohm's law to anything that we want. And because we know everything about this external resistor, right, it's accessible. We can just attach a voltmeter to it, an ohmmeter to it, and everything else. Well, we can go along and say, okay, well, 
for our set of numbers, that's going to be following. Okay, might be going off brain here, but I'll speak out the words. Okay, uh, we've got a voltage drop over the first resistor, the 10 ohm resistor of just one volt. And the resistance of that resistor we're taking to be exactly 10 ohms. You can measure it, and I measured it. It came out to be that in a rounding error, okay? And that gives us a current in this first case of 0.1 amps, okay? So now, in our loop rule, we've got this one as well. So all we need to do is a little bit of algebra, and we will arrive at the internal resistance of the battery when it is pushing around a tenth of an amp through its internal resistance. So, first subtract V sub R from both sides, okay? Then divide both sides by I to get little r all by itself, all right? And when we put in all the numbers for this, you, know, you put in your 1.599, you put in your 1.0, and you divide it by 0.1, you will get that the internal resistance is just under 6 ohms. Okay. Now, there's some imprecision in the measurements here. That seems really high. Okay. But it's only high because we're operating this battery in a mode where it's normally not being operated, okay? Uh, we, the 10 ohm res external resistance here is quite low, so we're pushing a lot of current, we're probably getting some heating, and we're operating the battery sort of close to its, uh, its tolerance, and so we have a relatively high internal resistance compared to the external resistance. It's about, uh, you know, it's about close to a third of the total resistance in the circuit in this case. Now if you go through this same process for the 100 ohm resistor, you find actually that the internal, based on our data, that the internal resistance for the 100 ohm resistor when the current is slightly lower is actually a little bit higher. So that answers that question about whether the internal resistance is ohmic or non-ohmic, right? Its resistance changes depending on conditions. So definitely not ohmic. <clears throat> but you get a slightly higher internal resistance when you have a 100 ohm resistor in there. But that means that the total resistance of the external circuit is a much larger fraction of the overall, um, of the overall resistance in the circuit. And so the internal resistance, despite being uh, around 7 ohms is what you should get a little more, okay, uh, doesn't affect the performance of the circuit nearly as much as the internal resistance does when you have a lower resistance. Uh, external to the battery and have a higher current flowing from the battery, okay? So, by the way, what's interesting to do is to then go back and calculate the terminal voltage of the battery, all right? In this case, we kind of know what it would be because the terminal voltage of the battery when you are measuring voltage across this has to be equal to this voltage drop, right? The external resistance is one volt this case. And so if you were to take that same voltmeter and you were to put it across the terminals of that AA battery that we looked at, okay, or that I looked at, you would find that same 1.0 voltage, which is not the rating, right? The rating for one of these batteries is 1.5 volts. So we're clearly operating it in a regime where the manufacturer is like, whoa, take it easy. Don't demand so much of our batteries. And uh, if you were to do this in lab and you were to leave that circuit uh, hooked up, you would notice that everything was getting quite warm after a little while. So it's one of those things where you connect it for a few seconds, measure what you need, and then move on. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of this calculation and discussion. Hope you had a good time with the activity. I'll see you later.